All right, let's get started. Lesson 19 we are going into, and it's this title uh, is Why Are Experts So Often Poor Communicators? Now, this message here I seen on, on YouTube, and it was from IES Business School. Uh, the guy who taught on this was uh, Connor Neal. And I thought that this, you know, it was coming from a business school. I thought that this really applied to even what we do as, as ministers, as teachers and preachers. And if we, if we get a hold of this, this can really help us with the whole presentation. Because again, we're talking about the preacher and his preaching, aren't we? So we've already seen that it's all part of our study. It's all part of our outlining, preparing our message. And we can have a great message, but if we don't also prepare ourselves in our presentation, we could destroy a really good, good message. So what we want to do is we want to be able to get that message through to our people and communicate it in a way that, you know, that they can hear it, that they can receive it, okay? And um, so this is, this is really important. So I'm going to go through something with you here. You look in your outline, and you will see how I gave you box one, box two, box three, box four. Now, you're going to have to draw this out for yourselves, okay? Because I couldn't draw it out on your outline in that there. But I'm going to draw this out on the board here, and then I am going to, going to explain this to you, okay? So we're going to make this box... <clears throat> And we're going to break this up into four sections. And so down here we have box one, here we have box three, here we have box four, and here we have box two. Okay. Now. This is really important. Now, on this side of the box, okay, what we have is um, communication. Okay, communication, and then the bottom side of the box, we have talent. or uh, competency. Or you could write knowledge or whatever, okay? We can... Now, this side over here is high. So on this bottom scale, this is the high end, this is the low end. Okay, so it's the low end for this scale, and it's the low end for this, for this one, and up here we have the high end of the scale. So, <clears throat> so what we are looking at here is we're going to look at a person's ability to communicate but also their knowledge, okay? Their understanding, uh, the talent that they have, okay? And, and we're going to look at the importance of communicating that knowledge that you have because you can have a whole lot of knowledge, but if you can't communicate it, then it doesn't do any good. Nobody's going to receive it, okay? Um, you can be able to communicate really well, be high on the communication, but be low in the knowledge. And again, then you got no content, you have nothing really to offer the people, okay? So up here, what we have in the number three, we have no skill, but great communicators, okay? No skill or very low on the knowledge level, but they can communicate and they can make great pres presentations, okay? So they look the part. They look the part. Okay? 
but really they're, they're fake, okay? They look the part of an expert. But they're not an expert, okay? They're charismatic, okay? But they're fake, okay? You could say they're, they're, they're charlatans, okay? So they're very charismatic. Um, and charlatans would really go on this level as well, okay? Because it's fake what they're presenting. They're trying to present themselves as being the, the expert, the person who knows everything, the person that you should be listening to. And people buy it because they're great communicators, okay? But their content is very low. They don't really have, have much to really offer, okay? So I'm just going to go through each box right now, just give a little explanation of each box so you understand it, and then we're going to go through this and teach on this, okay? Now... Here, number one, okay, they have no knowledge. And they don't have any skill, okay? No skill. Okay, these people are not going to be successful, okay? Now, in order for these ones to be successful in anything that they do, they've got a lot of work to do. they got a lot of learning to do, and they have a lot of learning in the communication department, okay? So they have no communication skills, and they have no knowledge, so they're not going to succeed. Now, over here, number two, you have those with great knowledge, because they're high on that knowledge scale or talent scale, competency scale, okay? Great knowledge, but no communication skills. So they have a lot of understanding. There's so much you can learn from this person, but the only thing is you don't wanna to listen to this person because they can't communicate it. So they put you to sleep or they're boring. You just can't receive from them, okay? And this is a problem, okay? So high in knowledge, high in talent, high in skill, but they can't communicate, so they don't succeed either. All right? So because they can't communicate their knowledge. Now, the fourth one is high skill, and great communicators. Because they're on the high end of the bottom scale, and they're on the high end of the communication skill. So they're high on the knowledge, high on the talent, they're understanding, and they're high on the the communication. So they're high in skill, great communicators, they know what they're talking about, and they can communicate it, okay? And they can communicate it with excellence, okay? So these ones are going to be very successful in what they do, okay? So now again, this is used in a, in a business model, but we're talking about this in ministry and in preaching. And I, I believe that this also applies. So if we want to be, if we want to be success, successful in our ministries and we want to see people grow in their knowledge and their understanding of the Word of God, we want to communicate uh, truths to them where they can apply it and they can begin to grow in Christ, then this is where we want to get to. We want to get to a point where we have great knowledge, skill, and where we can communicate uh, our message successfully, and we can see it where it gets to the point where it changes changes lives, okay? So as we go through this, we're going to get more understanding here, and you're going to see how this works in the ministry. Now, I hope you can see this. If not, you know, I, I hope it's it's showing up for you, but you'll get it as I explain it, okay? And sorry, I'm not great at writing or drawing, okay? But um, But you'll get the point. So box number one, Low skill, 
and uh, no ability to, to communicate. So these ones aren't going to go anywhere. Uh, box number four, we know they're going to do very well. They're going to succeed because they're high on both ends of the scale. Box number three communicates great, but they're fake. Not much knowledge, but they can sell it by their great communication, by their great um, presentation. But they're dangerous because they look the part, but they don't deliver. Okay? And then box number two, great knowledge and skill. They are needed, but often are overlooked because of poor communication skills. They can't deliver or sell it to the people, and people are more attracted to the great speaker, those who are charismatic, even though they need the expert. So let me put it this way. This is your PhD, okay? This is your guy who's got all the knowledge, okay? Doctors or doctors, okay? These guys have studied. They know what they're talking about. They know the ins and the outs of everything. This is who you want to learn from, okay? This is the guy that's got great knowledge. This is who we need to be listening to, yet nobody listens to him because he can't communicate in a way that people can receive it. But you know what? People are drawn to this guy. He's got no skill. He doesn't have what you need, okay? But he can present it, and he's got a great presentation, but he's got no depth or no nothing there to really offer you. But yet everybody listens to that guy because he's so charismatic, and he's good in his presentation. So it just shows you how important communication is, okay? This is what everybody needs to feed from. This is what they need, but yet they go over here because this is what they like to see and like to hear. Okay, they don't like the, what they see here. They don't like how the, what they're hearing. Okay, because of the presentation, so they go to something like this. Okay, now the problem is here is that there isn't enough fours in the world. The number two is excellent in work and knowledge, but haven't done the work to communicate it well. And then unfortunately, everyone sees number three uh, and are attracted to them because they communicate well but they have no depth, they have a lack of content, and the experts, those with a lot of knowledge, can see right through these guys, okay? But what happens is the number twos um, see the number threes as charlatans, and they're drawn away from what they do. But the number twos have to come to number three to become number fours, okay? <laughs> so they have to learn to present and to communicate a little bit. Learn a little bit of feeder in your gestures, your voice as you speak in order to move up and be authentic. It'd be the authentic you, okay? That's what Connor Neal said, okay? Now, again, let me explain this. So, again, we can eliminate this one. We don't even need to talk about this guy, okay? So, there's no point even talking about this one. Nobody, nobody who is taking this course is there, Okay? You all have knowledge, okay? You may need to work on this, but this is, this is the goal of all of us, myself included. This is where we want to get to. We all want to become number fours, high in knowledge, high in skill, and good in our presentation, okay? Now, what do we need to do? We need to learn. We need to get to this point where we have great understanding, we have great knowledge so that we have what? We have content. We have meat in our messages, th that what people need, okay? We want to give them the word. We want to give them understanding of the word. But if I just stay there and just focus on my knowledge, then it's not going to be received because I can't communicate it, okay? Now, as Neil said, is the number two needs to what? Learn from the number three. Okay, what does he need to learn from the number three? He needs to learn how to present and how to communicate. Okay, because that's what this guy is very good at. This is why this guy succeeds and why people listen to him. Okay, but as we go through this, what you, now what you see is that the number three also, what does he need? He also needs the number two because he has to grow in his knowledge and in his understanding. He has to have some content to give. So in order for the two to become a four, 
the two has to learn from the three and put this into practice to become the four. The three, in order to become a four, has to learn from the, what the two has to become a four. He's already got the three, but he needs the two part to become the four. And same with the two. The two needs the three in order to become the four. Okay? So what do we want? We want knowledge and we want to learn to communicate. Okay? This is really important. Um, Olivia Schofield said, an actor is an expert in being somebody else. Okay? Because they're putting on an act. They're copying somebody else, becoming somebody else. But a speaker is an expert in being themselves. Okay? That's, that's really important. We talked about this in the last lesson, that you are a personality. And the truth, the message, comes through a personality. Okay? Now, you need to be an expert in yourself. So you have to discover yourself. Who am I? Who does God want me to be? What is my personality? What is my characteristic? Okay? Now, Neil also said something. He said that you, you would have to, you need to learn a little bit of theater in your gestures and in your voice as you speak in order to move up, to be an authentic you. So at first, remember I was telling you, you need to look in a mirror. You need to practice at home. Okay? So now if you see yourself, you know, inside, you may be this person that's excited and joyful and all this, but you just don't show that expression. When you're in front of people, maybe because you're shy or timid or something, you're just kind of, you get monotone or you don't really speak. You don't want to speak. You don't want to be heard. Okay. But inside, you're something different. You know who the true you is. Well, what you have to do is you got to bring that out. Okay. Now, that might take practice. That may be like looking in the mirror. How am I going to express myself? How are my facial expressions going to be? People need to see I'm excited by my face. They need to see what I'm feeling by my, if I'm serious, <laughs> I got the serious look. If I'm happy, I got a happy look. If I'm excited, my, you know, my eyes are getting a little bigger. Maybe my eyebrows are rising. You can see it in my face. Um, but the hand gestures and stuff too. So what you start to do is you just start to release that. Start working on some things. Let those hand gestures come out. Work on the expressions and things like this. And then what you do, so at first it's a little bit of theatric, okay? A little bit of theater. You're, you're, you're kind of just at first maybe acting. But what you're going to do is you're going to find out who you are. And all that stuff just becomes natural because the natural you is beginning to come out. You're not suppressing it anymore either, okay? So at first you need to, so this is why the practice is so important, okay? Now these are things you may have never thought about with, with, with preaching and that, okay? So, but you need to learn this. Um, you can look at, you know, other preachers and how they preach and how they present, okay? And you can look at some of those things. Now I'm not saying copy everybody because you got to find out who you are, but look at the things they do, okay, to, to, to become expressive, and to become good communicators, all right? Uh, I didn't mention in my last lesson, I forgot to, but, you know, one movement, when you look at the, say, for the Word of Faith movement, for example, now that was started by Kenneth E. Hagan. He started the Word of Faith movement. And so he started Rhema Bible College. And he started Rhema Bible College. Everybody came up under him. And then everybody left and went on, started their ministries, okay? And what did they do? They just started preaching all of his messages, Okay, they didn't prepare their own, they just preached his. They didn't say they were preaching Brother Hagin's <laughs> messages, but they all preached his messages. And they tried to be exactly like him. And you can see it even till this day, they, they are all acting like him. You know, but then you see the ones who have their own personalities and, and difference. They allowed themselves to come through it, okay? So some were uh, emulators, they were just copying, pretending. The Bible tells us not to be emulators, but, you know, but at the same time, you can learn from other people and watching other people, okay, and how they preach. But your personality needs to come out. So again, you got to discover, who am I? And then you look at how these others present, and you can, you can adopt some of those things, okay? So, you know, you can, you can notice how some people, hand gestures. You can see certain preachers. Um, you know, some preachers, uh, what they'll do is they'll, some preachers point, um, like principal preaching or something. Uh, if you watch a, a Bill Johnson or something from Bethel Church, you watch him preach. He likes to say these little statements, and then he pauses. He makes this big pause. He makes a statement, big pause. And then he'll go over here, another statement, big pause. And what is he doing? He's, he's doing that for effect, okay? 
to make an impact on what he says, okay? To get the people, oh, wow, okay? Then you got the other ones, you know, trying to get people excited, so they're running around showing their excitement because they want people getting excited, okay? So the things that we do affect, affect the other people, okay? Affect how people react in that to the messages. And so we need to find out who, who we are, okay? And we need to put some things in practice. So we want to gain the knowledge, we want to learn, we want to become skilled, we want to become an expert, but you don't have to be an expert to start preaching, okay? But then we also need to learn here how to present, how to communicate, and then we're on our way to becoming a four, okay? And that is going to be a long process. You won't get there right away. You know, not many are there. It's like uh, Neil said, he said there's not enough fours, okay? It's hard to get here. It takes a lot of study. It takes a lot of practice, okay? But you can be on your way. You could be partway there, in between, <laughs> you know, on your way there, and you'll be doing well, okay? But here's what he said here. He says, the number fours have learned this, to begin to act until they find themselves, okay? Their authentic selves, and no longer need to mask, so you do it at first. So at first it may be like acting, but then along the way, what you're going to find is you're going to discover yourself and you find the authentic you and then the mask comes off. Okay. When I started preaching, it was the same thing. You know, I, I've changed a lot over the years because what have I done? I've discovered myself. I discovered my true self. Now, when I get in the pulpit, I'm not like, Okay, oh yeah, I got to remember to do this. I got to move my hands or I need to do this. I need to, you don't even think about it. Why? Because this is who I am now. You know, so you develop this. Your personality comes through. The true you comes out, okay? And it becomes natural for you. Uh, you don't think you, now, and this is what he said, you don't need to think about the gestures and the movements anymore because it all comes together and become an expert at being themselves. It all comes together and you become an expert at being yourself. Okay? Really important. So, where are you on the scale right now? Now this I want you to ask yourself honestly. A lot of people are overconfident. A lot of people think too highly of themselves and they think they're already fours. They think they're the master communicator. They're the master of everything. Okay? Well, you know, you're, <laughs> there's a good chance you, you aren't that. There's a good chance you're not the master communicator as well. There's a good chance most of us, you know, I would say most, we're not all here there, here in number four, but we can be all on our way because we're developing ourselves and we're on our way, okay? So the two and the three coming together. So your knowledge is always going to be increasing, so you're always going to be studying. You're going through the school, so your knowledge is increasing. Listen to Bible studies. You're going to church services. You're studying the Word, listening things. So your knowledge is constantly increasing, which is good, okay? And you need to study the Word. Then, now we need to be increasing and working our, our, our communication skills so that we're starting to become a number four and on our way there. So now, so who are you right now? Do you have great knowledge? Do you have great, communica or great communication skills? Are you somewhere in between this? You know? And uh, you just need to keep working on all these things. So you need to ask yourself, where are you right now? So number four is what you want to be. Number two is who you want to work with because that's who you're going to learn from. Okay, but you won't receive him. You need his knowledge. But the good thing is the number four has his knowledge, but the number four has the ability to communicate. That's the one you're going to learn from. That's who we all want to be. Um, so here's an example. Um, seminary classes and things like this. Now, in my seminary classes, I had some professors who were so hard to listen to. Man, they would just put you to sleep. Okay, in their presentation, it was just like every time, you know, you listen to their lectures and everything, going through it, you're fighting, okay? You're just fighting to get through it. It's so boring. They're monotone. 
they sound like they have no energy. And it's just like, oh, they're putting you to sleep as you're listening to it. And you're just fighting to get through this, okay? But their knowledge, the content they had was good. But their presentation of it was, was, was terrible, okay? And there's a lot of people who, who, who are like that, okay? Now, if they would work on that a little bit more, that message and that gorge, it would come alive, okay? It would be a lot different. So that's, this is why we need to work on this. Okay, now... What is a good example of a number three? A good example of a number three is your motivational speaker. If you noticed... In Christianity, what has become popular? Who have become the most popular speakers? The motivational type speaker. Why? Because they've got this down packed. They can present. Okay? Now, so a good example of a number three are motivational speakers. They can get people excited. They can draw a crowd. They can motivate them but they have no real depth of content. They are okay for a beginner, but anyone with knowledge won't be interested. Okay? That is a great point. Now, beginners are going to be attracted to them. Okay? I need the show. I need the excitement. You ever notice, like here's a, like a perfect example is Tony Robbins, okay? Uh, he's a motivational speaker. And he's a teacher of beginners, okay? According, that's not my quote, that's according to Neil. Um, so now, he's a teacher of beginners. But those who are masters, those who have knowledge, they don't want li to listen to these guys. Because again, what do they look? They look at them as being charlatans. They have the presentation, but they don't have the goods. Okay? And so, you're going to notice this too. Um, as you mature in Christ, you grow in Christ, you grow in your wisdom and your knowledge, who you used to listen to when you first became a Christian may not be who you're listening to now. What was good when you first came to Christ no longer was good. Okay? Um, one thing I grew tired of fast when I came to Christ was hearing the same messages all the time. Because I, I grew up in a Word of Faith church. Now, Word of Faith, they love preaching healing. They love preaching on finances. Um, you know, maybe message of prayer. Um, faith is the big one. And so it constantly just seemed to be those topics over and over again. The money was the biggest one over and over again. And I was like, man, I'm not learning the Bible. You know, it's just this subject over and over again, one subject from another. And I was like, I want to learn the Bible. Like, what are these books of the Bible about? Doctrines of the Bible? Like, I'm not learning this. And I was getting really frustrated, okay? And I got tired of hearing about money and all this. And so what I had to do, I had to start studying on my own, okay? And um, then switch churches and that. And then, there, you know, uh, with Pastor William, and he, he, he taught more. He, he taught on a variety of subjects, you know? And then I... And then even then, you know, he still had craving for more. I was so hungry because, of course, God had a calling in my life. Okay, so now what I just start going to Bible school and I start learning more on these subjects. I start studying books of the Bible and all this, and I'm loving it, eating it up. So I'm still getting fed in my church. And then I'm also studying in the school and learning all these other subjects. Now, so now if you notice, there's even preachers who I was listening to when I first came to Christ, I don't listen to anymore. Why? Because they were good for the beginner. But as I matured, they didn't have enough content anymore to satisfy me or to feed me what I needed. I had grown beyond this. Okay? So the beginner is going to love this because this has the flash. This has the show. Okay? They have all the excitement. Okay? They have a crazy light shows, lots of action. And this is what is needed for beginners to get them on the path. Okay, but the expert's going to hate this. They don't want the show. They don't want the hype. They want someone who can take them deeper. That's important. That's why you need this guy. 
And you need what he's got, his knowledge. Okay? And that's what people need. But we also need this. If we can get this and this together and become the four, then we can reach a lot more people, be really successful in what we do, and they can receive the message and they can have the meat that they need to grow. You know, in the Bible, it talks about, you know, you first are given the milk of the word. The milk is like a baby who is, who's weaning on his, mother's, um, on his mother's milk for the first part of his life. But eventually, what does he need? In order to be healthy, in order to grow and be strong, he needs the meat. Just like a Christian. Hey, this will do fine in the beginning. But you're going to ungrow that. And you're going to have to get off the milk. And you're going to have to get into the meat. Okay? Problem is, they won't listen to him. Because he can't present. So we need, to, we need more force, those who have the knowledge and who can present so people can learn from these people and grow further into the Word of God. <clears throat> so a good example, you know, as we said, of number three are motivational speakers. Now what you see is a lot of TV preachers. Now not all, because some are good TV preachers. Uh, they, a lot of them, there's some that have, have good knowledge in depth, Okay. And they can present well. But a lot of them are right here. And what you're going to see is a lot of the Christians today, they're immature in their faith. They can't stand on their two feet. Every time a problem comes up, they're defeated, they're depressed, they're down, they're discouraged, and everything. Why? Because this is where they're being fed. This is what they're attracted to. And this is where they're staying. So there's no growth. There's no depth in their life. If they could transfer to this and find somebody here who could communicate this to them in a way, then they could grow and become strong. You know, so this is the importance of getting there. So for people to really grow, learn, and succeed, they need the force. The number twos can't do it. They have the meat that they need, but they can't get it to them. They can't get it here because they don't want to hear those ones. So there are teachers. Um, so there are teachers for beginners and there are teachers for experts. Okay? Teachers. For two types of people. Right? One, beginners. And then number two, for experts. So we could put it as this, the mature, because we're, we're talking Christianity. We're not talking, we're not talking a business here, okay? Now, what type of teacher are you going to be? Are you going to be the one who just teaches the ABCs of the faith and doesn't go beyond that? Or are you going to be the one who gets into the meat of the word? Okay? If a person sticks with the beginner, the number three, he'll always be, they'll always remain a baby in Christ. Okay? They'll never grow to be mature. So there has to be a shift. Okay? So there has to be a shift. The one that becomes to the expert, the matures, the ones who are well studied and can feed the word, then they can mature because now they're feeding on the meat of the word. They're getting the nutrient that they need in order to grow, okay? So there are teachers for beginners, teachers for experts. The teachers for beginners can only lead so far. They can motivate, but soon the student outgrows them and needs more. The teacher of experts takes them to the next levels of growth. Okay? So, that's what you want to do. You want to be able to take them to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. Okay? Be able to feed them what they need. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, when you're looking for a teacher, what kind of teacher do you need? One who takes you the first couple of steps or one who has a deep well to draw from and can help you grow? 
You need the one who has the deep well, okay? The deep well who can help you grow. Because the beginner, you're going to outgrow that guy fast. And if, you, and if it's just all about hearing, remember what Paul said, in the last days people are going to have itchy ears seeking teachers who will tell them what they want to hear. That's your number three, okay? And unfortunately, this is where everybody's running today. They want to hear from this guy. He's got the flash. He's got the presentation. But no depth, no growth. And this is why we have the problems we have in Christianity today. This is why everybody's so immature. This is why so many people are so defeated. This is why people aren't really living for Christ today. This is why people aren't out preaching the gospel today. Why? They're too busy listening to these guys. Okay? Now I'm hoping that you get, you're getting the point here. This guy needs to learn from this guy so he's got depth in what he presents. This guy needs to learn from this guy so that he can present it in a way that people will receive what he's got. He's got the deep well, but he's got to learn to present. This guy's got both. He's got the deep well, and he can present it. Okay? So that's what we need. So Neil said, we want to take the path of, crass, of a craftsman. A craftsman is a person who has learned the art, he has the skill, he has the knowledge, and he does it the, himself. He controls all the variables, okay? So a craftsman is in control of everything. He's able to do everything that he needs to do to produce that product, okay? So he's an expert of his trade. Now that's what we wanna become. We wanna become experts of our trade. That's right, so we wanna become number fours, okay? Let me give you an example. Now, I'm not saying that I'm a, a four, okay? Now, I have studied a lot. I've studied over 60-something courses, okay, on the Bible. I teach it constantly all week. I'm constantly studying the Word of God, okay? So, I have a well of information and knowledge, right? Okay, now, I'm a craftsman. I want to work on my trade. I want to work on it. I want to keep growing in my knowledge. I want to keep working on my presentation so I can become that four, okay? But as a craftsman also, I want to get to the point that, you know, I have all that knowledge. I can communicate and I can do everything that I need to do to run my craft. In this pandemic, here's a perfect example. Now, let's say... During the pandemic, I wasn't allowed to have anybody with me. My media team, my video guys, and all that kind of stuff, okay? The ministry wouldn't stop. If I was just by myself, this ministry would continue, okay? Now, again, I'm not bragging, okay? Just listen to this, okay? Um, this is just a lesson for you guys. Because I can run the video equipment. I can run the soundboard. I know how to edit the videos. Okay, I know how to do all that stuff. So I can preach the message, I can make the message, I can preach the message, and I can get the message out. Okay, so here's what a craftsman does. He works on his trade so that he's able, he's in control of all the variables. And that no matter what, he's able to accomplish his task that God has given him. Okay, so that's where you want to get. And I know some of you are working on that. Okay, and the more you work on it, the better you're going to become at that stuff too, okay? So become a craftsman of the trade. So in other words, what do we need to do now? Okay, we need to gain the knowledge and we need to learn how to communicate. So we have to put the work in here. We've got to study, okay? You'll never get away from that. Got to study. Then you got to learn to communicate so we can become the force. So when we become a four, high skill or knowledge, we can communicate the message well, we're going to be successful. And what are we going to see? We're going to see people grow in Christ. Now that's not part of the business model, <laughs> obviously, but that's our goal. What do we want? We want mature believers. We want to take them from here, the ABCs, to here. So what are we working on? 
being a teacher of beginners to becoming a teacher of experts. That needs the teacher of the mature, okay? This guy here, the expert, the number four, he can teach the beginners and he can teach the mature because he's got such a well to draw from that he's able to give whatever is required from the people, okay? And he can communicate it. So I hope this helps you to understand um, some of this, okay? Now, just closing on this point, you never want to get to the point where you think you know everything. And you don't need to grow where you think you know everything and you don't need to grow anymore or improve. Because then you're unteachable and you can't get any higher than where, where you are now. If you think you're already a four, you can't get any higher, okay? This is what we're striving for. We want to constantly be increasing. You know, if this was in container, number two, if this was in container, how full's the container? You got a quarter full? Are you half full? You three quarters full? You should be on your way to trying to fill up that container. Your communication side, where are you? Quarter full? Half? Three quarters? You should be working your way to getting up there. Because as we do this, the closer and the more and more we become, we become a four. But this is going to be a journey. Constantly increasing in our knowledge, constantly increasing in our communication to become this. And then we can accomplish the task that Christ has given us. Okay? But the thing is, you start where you are. Okay? And you keep improving. You don't start here. Okay? You got to begin to work on all of these things together. You got to work on the communication and the knowledge together. And you'll be constantly increasing, constantly growing until you become who Christ wants you to be. Okay? So don't think, oh, I don't have enough knowledge right now. Well, you who are listening to this right now, you're in your third year of school of ministry. You've been Christians for how long? Listen to how much Bible teaching? How many sermons have you listened to? You've got a wealth of knowledge still to draw from, okay? So you start with that knowledge you have and work on your communication now to present it, okay? Then people can begin to receive the message, all right? So again, don't stay here, okay? But learn from them. And then don't stay here, but learn from them. And then become this, number four. Head to that number four, okay? Okay, so I talked about each box here being like a container. So now, as you grow in your wisdom and your knowledge, you know, you can be, you're going to get further up this, this container. Quarter, full, half full, three quarter full, however, until, you know, you're full. The same thing in the communication thing. You're going to increase in this container. You're going to become better and better. Quarter, half, three quarters along the way, okay? But as you increase in both of these, okay, you're increasing. So as you're increasing in your knowledge, you're working on your communication, you're becoming higher and higher in this level. You're developing into becoming that four, okay? And the more you grow in your knowledge, the more you grow in your communication, the more you grow in becoming a number four, okay? So again, this is something that we continually work on and we continually grow and we can continually uh, increase, okay? So we don't want to stop learning. We want to keep increasing our knowledge and we want to keep working on our presentation and our communication and we become more and more and more a number four, okay? We grow in that. Lots of knowledge good communicators. All right. So I hope that helped you to understand how this all works. I've seen this model and I thought, hey, this is great. And this would be good for us to learn as well and be good for part of this part of this course. Okay. So um, that's the end of this course for homiletics.